Mm-hmm. Hey guys! Who's flipping my flapjacks? Okay. What we're gonna be doing in today's video, discounted cash flows and such, and other ways to figure out the intrinsic value of a stock. We're gonna be looking at Twitter. I'll save you the time and effort if you don't wanna watch the video. I know it says CVS there, but I forgot to change that to Twitter. Um, this company's massively overvalued. You can tell that by the 130 PE ratio. So we'll come over here. It has a market cap of $49 billion. And it should generate a free cash flow using a multiple of 20 of $2,460,150,000, depending on what multiple you're using. I use 20 in that case. What it, <clears throat> It's five-year average is $579 million. That would give it an expected market cap of $11,580,000. Again, depending on the multiple that you are using. And that would give you, divided by shares outstanding, a $13.33 stock at this point. But I also did, I believe this is 12, um, a ton divide E15. Oh, I have to go look where it's 12 that I used. Um, to give you a share price of $10.66, which is when I average those two together, about your gram number. Here's your book value per share. So if it was trading under that, maybe if Twitter was something that you wanted, grab it. But I don't know about all that. Here's its earnings per share. Normally, I like to pick up a company somewhere between 9 and 13 if I am going to add them. Um, grow. So for the past year, they grew at 34%. I don't think that's sustainable over a decade. For the past five years, they grew 16%. I don't really think that is feasible either. Um, maybe 12%. We'll change this one at the end just to uh, see a little bit different way. So if you take all these and you come out, I like to get a range. So I have it between growing 5% a year and 30% a year. Come over here and we look at PE ratio of 35 discounted at 10% and discounted at 15%. If you cut the difference in average, take the average of these and the average of these, you get a share price of $21. Still don't think that's even feasible in any way. A price to earnings ratio of 25, 30% growth, you're looking at a $50 stock discounted at 10%, down to a $7.33. And discounted at 15% for a 15% return. Looking at a stock price between $4.70 and $32. I averaged all these out. If we get into the realistic price to earnings ratio, we're getting a share price of $12.16. But understand that I ran this at 30% a year. So that's going to up the price. You know what I mean? It's just, it's going to look like it's worth more than it is. Um, honestly, I wouldn't buy Twitter stock. It just, I mean, I would a small portion if I thought it could make an outsized return, but I just, I hate the business model. Um, I don't know what they can continue at. Maybe they'll be an, turn out to be an excellent buy when their price to earnings ratio comes down to something reasonable. But if we're looking at this from the standpoint of a, the historic PE ratio, discount a 10%, 5% growth, $4.40 stock up to a $30 stock. I averaged these together to get $9.37. So you're between nine and $13. Because I do this because I do these averages because you just never know where the stock's gonna go. So get an approximation of the worst case scenario and the best case scenario, 
where would I want to buy? Somewhere around. Then, if you come down over here, I calculated the free cash flow over here with a terminal multiple of three, meaning I think it's going to grow at 3% in perpetuity. You're looking at a low end of $299 to a high end of $24. And let's just average that to $812. The average of all of these together gives you a $13 stock. Um, that is not accounting for dilution because they are diluting their shareholders. So if we were going to look at that, I'm going to give it... If they're going to dilute you by 15% over the next um, 10 years, which I think is a possibility, and that bakes in a margin of safety. You're looking at an $11 stock if you look at it that way. I used everything money, and they had a range of between $4.40 to $71, and that was for like a 25% return. And so we will... These are just the meat spin Kevin projections that I like to do and laugh. And it still isn't even selling with a meat spin Kevin PE ratio at its high. Wait, I must have messed this up because it's 70 up here. Oh, yeah, I went through and changed those down because that was stupid. Anyways, um, if you come over here and this is a, it grows at 30% per year and you multiply the earnings per share in 2031 of $5.20 times the historic average of the stock market, a PE ratio of 15, divided by, you get a 67, you get a 67.73 market cap. 869 million shares outstanding. That's $63, taking consideration 30% growth per year, it'd be trading at a little above what it's trading for now. You do a discounted cash flow on it, and I did um, I did 10% here. Let's go to the 15% dilution. You're looking at a $20 share, but I mean, if you lower this, let's just go with something like 16. So that's, uh, was that L9? So if you come in here, you change this. I mean, 16% revenue growth per year for the next 10 years. You get a share price of $22.87 and a share price of $7.49. Even if there's no dilution at best, you're looking at an $8.82 stock. Um, if we come down here, what I did here is I took the, what did I take here? Total shareholder equity. Yep. Took the total shareholder equity off of the everything money sheet. I divided it by the total number of out uh, shares outstanding. I got an $8.88 stock. Then I put the cash flows back in, and these were the high cash flows. So, I mean, you're looking at U21. Yeah. You're looking at still and this is being extremely generous the way i figured this out pe ratios are different but you're looking at about a 19 dollars stock i wouldn't really do it this way i would look at it more like this that's what it's worth today um this is what it'll be worth if you go out to uh 2031 you come up here and you look there you go I mean, I don't know what more you would need to not buy this stock. The numbers don't lie. You're looking at just a massively negative return over. The, 
and it makes sense. It has 130 PE ratio. Um, there's just no way that I can make this work except it grows by 30% per year and it sells at a 35 price to earnings ratio in 2035. Which this would be a mature company at that point. And I mean, even if you drop it down, you're looking at a $25 stock today. If you drop it, if it grows at 16% per year, I tend to believe the, um, the five-year average over this year as a more uh, standing out. This is like I don't believe that it's going to do anywhere near thirty percent. I think this is a growth company that'll probably do between twelve and sixteen percent over the next ten years. So it just depends on what you believe. There you go. You got a stock between. $2.99 and nineteen or $24.61. It could be as high as 70 if you believe it's going to grow at 30% per year. This is off of everything's money because they have accounted for share dilution in theirs. And I grew their, them at 25%. These up here don't account for share dilution. If you dilute this to 0.85. So if you were selling, grew, grew at 30% per year, according to the cash flow, selling at a multiple, a, P, a price to earnings ratio of 35, and you diluted the shares by 15%, you have a $59 stock, and this is a ridiculous price to earnings ratio, and it still doesn't work for the price you're paying for today. So... I don't know what to tell you other than that. Just avoid this stock like the plague, like it's like a COVID plague rat. I don't know what to tell you. If you buy this stock, you're going to be down at the docks in retirement doing things to sailors. You'll be flipping somebody's flapjacks. 